In this video, guys, we're going to look at what I learned about price action from listening to the Trading Pit audio for many years. Stay tuned. Hey, traders, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for your support. If you're a subscriber, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing below. Okay, so I used to subscribe, talking about subscriptions, I subscribe to a Traders Pit Audio. This was a guy with a headset who would sit up in the, in the trading pit, the S&P 500 pit, on kind of, I don't know how many levels back, five, six, seven, eight, ten levels back at the top with his computer. He would look down at the pit, you'd be able to hear the pit noise, and you'd be able to hear his commentary on the pit. So in other words, he would say, hey, Goldman's coming in to buy this. You know, some, some broker's doing this. Some of the bigger locals are trading this. He would tell you what was going on. He'd be your eyes in the pit. So if you're standing there, he would tell you what you could see. And also you could hear the volume and intensity of the pit as well. I'm not sure if you had a separate microphone kind of lower down or if it just picked up naturally. The point is the volume of the pit would pick up and pick down pick up and decline so as price started getting really really busy you know after data or something or at the open you'd hear a big roar of voices and shouting and stuff you wouldn't be able to make out individual voices but you'd hear you know kind of a crowd getting noisier and at lunchtime you just hear you, you would then hear individual voices you'd hear people just messing about you know shouting to each other just generally goofing about because it was just so quiet um but the value add came from this guy for his name now, Ben, Ben something or other. Someone might better remind me in the comment section below. Great guy though. He would be telling you what was going on the pit. So what did I learn from price action? Don't have this anymore. Obviously, S&P 500 pit. Uh, what did I learn from price action? Number one is price looks for liquidity. So very often, this is the key thing, guys. This is, this is probably the best thing out of all of it. The key thing is, and this is, you know, people have the, this fallacy that I've put my stop above the high uh, and, and I am going to get stopped. I get stopped out all the time because you're putting your stop where everyone else is. And why does it happen? Price moves to liquidity. Price will move where it believes liquidity is going to be. Whether that is, one, people pushing it, and there were times when locals, they called them, which were the guys who were trading for their own account and dealing deals back and forth, trying to scout money in between one guy or another or getting on the end of just like we would do as electronic locals on our computer. They would stand there. They would take positions. They would look for it. You'd have locals who were big players who would try to push the market or bully the market over a high or over a low then they will come out of it knowing there's a batch of liquidity they can exit the position into and make some money. So a guy, number one local, he would push the market lower, 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 very, very aggressively. When there was no other volume going on, when it was very, very quiet and he could do that, he would force the market lower and lower and lower and lower until it hit the few, until it hit a low. As it broke through the low, you get a flush of volume coming in because people know there's liquidity, they know there's stops under that low sell stops. He would then buy into those sell stops, cover his short position and walk out of the pit. Job done for the day. So that's an extreme example. What well, the point is, price will move above highs and above lows to look for liquidity, either intentionally or just because the liquidity vacuum sucks the price up to that level. So if you're always thinking of getting stopped out in the right market conditions or the wrong market conditions, you're going to get stopped out just because you've got it too tight or you're above the level or above the or a price. If the price is going to the level where everyone expects it to go to. So just think like one step ahead of that. So that got me thinking kind of in my trading, hey, where can I put my stop that is still sensible but is not where everyone else is putting it or flip it on its head and say, hey, well, why don't I enter where everyone else is getting stopped and have my stop another layer above? And that changes the way you look at it completely. You know, sometimes you do have to have a stop where everyone else is having it because it's a momentum type play and you think, well, that's generally the place to do it. But if you're going too broad and going with the crowd, you probably want to have your limit where everyone else is having their stop because price is probably going to go there, but it's probably not going to go any further so you can have your stop another layer above. If I illustrate that very quickly on the board here, I've done this before, but let's say that's your high here. Most people have got a stop here. If your limit goes there, but your stop goes there, you're ratcheting up the whole trade and making it a lot different. Okay, so that was something that I learned from listening to the pit audio. Price will move, it will probe highs, it will probe lows. And you can see it on our chart, but it's obviously more 
sticks to your mind more when you're hearing it. Okay, number two, extreme moods, extreme urgency. When things were kicking off and they were moving, guys were screaming. You could hear them absolutely screaming. Of course, they're trying to get filled. They're trying to get filled for themselves. They're trying to get filled for a client. They're trying to get this. They're trying to get out. They're losing money. They're making money. Extreme moods, extreme urgency. But what does that mean for us? It means that as price starts to get really moving, shifting aggressively, price sensitivity goes out the window. People want to get in quickly. That offers us opportunity. I've said this before, when price is moving, when it's active, people are using market orders, so they're not price sensitive, they're time sensitive. They do not want to wait. They want to get in or out now. And that offers us opportunity because you've got a crowd of people doing that. That is going to move the price. That is what causes price to move up or move down. We can make money from that. So as a trader, if we focus on times when we have momentum, when we have opportunity, we have volume, we have key levels broken, when people are acting a little bit irrationally, opportunity for us. Okay, number three, time constraints also offer opportunity. What I mean by that, when the open happens, the opening bell, when the closing bell's coming up, this offers us opportunity because everyone knows they've got to have their order done by the bell and that's it. And so the Crowd starts to pick up, people start to get a bit more active, more voice, more volume, more or less price sensitivity. That's why we often see these last 15 minute, hour, 30 minute drives because people are trying to get orders done because then once the bell goes, that's it. So pre, pre, pre data at the open, after the open, uh, after, sorry, before the close, those kind of areas where we know there's a predefined area of time where people are trying to get stuff done. You might say, well, why the open? Well, very often people are, are told they have to execute something in the first 15 minutes or the first hour of the open because there's a liquidity there and they can't execute after. So when people have those time constraints, opportunities develop. All right, number four, knowing who's on the other side of your trade is crucial. Guys, the guys in the pit, the floor traders were masters of this especially the locals. A big local would know there's a weak local there. He'd know the weak local's position or he'd know how the locals were positioned and he'd know they weren't well capitalized and he'd know if he bullied the market around, okay, we can't do this now, but I'm giving you uh, the idea and the framework behind this. He knew that if he bullied that market around and pushed it to an extreme, these guys would have to throw it up. They have to vomit it out. They have to spit out the position and he'd take the other side of it. So the key was he knew who was on the other side of the trade. He knew he traded with these guys at the other end of the, of the chart earlier on in the day. He knew how they were positioned. He knew that as the price has moved, it's now close to a high. All I have to do is shove it through that high and these guys are going to spit that right out and I'm going to take the profit from it. So he knew who his counterparty was. He knew who's on the other side of the trade. So from an electronic perspective, while we don't know the motives of each one, while we don't know the person, we don't know the financial situation, whatever it may be, you can know the motivations of the trader. For example, if we're in a small cap stock, if we're in a cryptocurrency that's ripping to highs, we know likely the other side of the trade are people who are looking for quick money, quick speculation. If we're in GE, if we're in Coca-Cola, we know likely it's going to be institutions who aren't probably going to be flustered by little tiny moves. We know if we're trading crude oil futures and it's ripping through highs, we know a lot of people are speculating in this. We know a lot of people, we can start to guess, hey, a lot of people are stuck short on this, the short floats high on this stock, it's now going to highs. It's not as easy, and I'm kind of bearing that in mind here, but the point is, Look at the chart. Has it already pushed the lows of the chart beforehand? Now it's going to highs. It's pushed the lows. We know there's a lot of people who are short on that. We know that there's more likely to be people stopping out as we now go to highs we reverse twice intraday. It's this thinking about who's on the other side of the trade and why that will cause the price to move in your direction. It was not as easy as the guys had it in the pit, but we can still at least have an idea of potentially what might happen based on what has happened before, based on the market we're trading, based on the participants likely in the market and all those kind of things. All right, guys, there's four things that I learned about price action when listening to the Traders Pit Audio. Thanks to Ben, who was doing the Traders Pit Audio for those years. It was good fun. But those are four things that I've taken from my trading now, useful tips for trading now on the electronic screens. If you like this style of stuff, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet already. I appreciate your comments in the comment section below too. Take care, good trading, keep the risk managed. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.